Hello, hello, my friends. Amy R. here with Prairie Paper and Ink. Welcome back to my face and my card making space. And I just remembered a supply I needed to grab. So prepared. So prepared. Where is my stuff? No. Nope. Um, hello, crackle face. Where are you? This the one? No. No. No, I don't want your help. This is what I want. We're good. I'm back. <laughs> it's like the main focus of what I'm doing. Oi. I think this is on. Yeah, this is what I want. We're good. We're good. Hello. Hello. Everything, I think, is mostly working, you know, barring whatever random tech issues, because there's always something. There is always something. Hooray. Although my lives always stay up, I don't edit them, anything, all my lives always stay up afterwards for the replay crew, and I don't edit them so that the, the live chat stays with it, um, so people can reference it if they want. And yeah, yeah, I'm like all over the place, literally. Sound should be good. Video should be good within reason. We're still experiencing difficulties. We're, work we're working on it just like everything else. And I lost a wafer dye in this process too. This is, it's here. I'm just not sure. There it is. I found it. We're good. We're good. Sort of. Hopefully. We'll see. Um, yeah. Yeah. Hello. Hello and welcome. And all the, all the fun things. Chris is here and I'll just address this right off the bat. He does not have a microphone. No, this one does not pick him up very well. If people only understood just how expensive it is to set these th sort of things up down the road, w we would love to have a whole setup and, and a camera. I don't even like one thing at a time, man. It, it is. Yeah. I need to get the sound working on my end fully before we even consider adding a microphone to that end. So yeah, he's here. It's all good. He's, he's going to help kind of moderate all the things and help link things for me and all that. I do have links um, to everything pretty much that I plan to use in the description box below. They're already there. I even have a direct link to a visual supply list that you can click on, opens in another window. Everything's there. And yeah, yeah, I got everything linked, got it all, all planned in my head. We'll see if it all works. And that is kind of, um, that on on that and I think okay just tell him to yell yeah no 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 but yeah he's he's here we're 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 doing our thing you know he's he just volunteers to sort of help because it saves me on having to do unbelievable levels of multitasking I can multitask but it gets a little crazy during, during lives and, and all the things. So yeah, Chris is the unpaid intern is a huge help. Um, besides if he had a mic, he might talk too much. Eh, he's, he's pretty good, but yeah. Yeah. It's just, I've had, I've literally had literal complaints now. That's the newest one is people complaining that they can't hear him and that he needs a mic. And I'm like, if you guys only knew how much it cost me to get the whole, I had to get a whole new setup after the live went completely hairwire and the mic conked out that'd be two weeks ago now wasn't it uh yep two weeks. two weeks ago so yeah it is it is a hefty investment and i've already got an absolute kind of dangerous situation going on between cords and all the things like none of this happens magically it is it is a tech nightmare really logistical nightmare but okay it is all good everything um seems to be working so hello to all my peoples and we're gonna get right into it because we need time for things to dry I'm <laughs> after I say all this stuff I'm gonna attempt a technique I've never done I've wanted to do it just never never did it so I was like why not do it live that's so smart. I'm, I'm genius. It, sh it should work. We'll see. We'll see what happens. So anyway, let's, let's just get right into it. Okay. Everything. 
um, your interaction is really funny in these lives. It'd be nice to be able to hear them. Yes. And again, I get it. I can only afford so much at a time. <laughs> Literally, man. I can only afford so much time. The cord alone to hook the mic up to my computer was a small fortune. Like, we're talking like the whole setup into the four figures. It was, it was not. This is why it works so much. Anyway, that's enough. We'll, we'll get there. We will get there and it's all good. I need to switch. Oh, I think my camera froze. Can you, I need the unpaid intern. I, I can tell just by looking at it on the overhead, I think. Did it? Oh, never mind. I lied. We're good. I was going to have to have the unpaid intern like unhook and rehook things. Everything's working so far. We're good. We're good. We're going to start off. We're going to do some mix, mix media chaos. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> the idea in my head might not translate this time. We'll just, we'll just see. But we're going to start off with just a background stamp. This is an oldie but goodie uh, friendship text background. Again, everything's linked in the description below. This came out a few years ago. Just any, any little text, any simple um, patterns, that sort of thing. This is more, this is just kind of filler in a sense. Um, so I'm going to stamp it. Okay, first off, this is Distress White Heavy Stock. A little ASMR. Stuff that really helps with, you could use Canson XL watercolor paper, Ranger watercolor paper. Those work wonderfully as well. Because we are going to do some ink smushing. I saw it. I'll get it. <laughs> I read your mind. Uh, thank you, Zon, so much. I appreciate it. Um... Because we're going to do some ink smushing, you want something that can hold up to water. So you want watercolor paper. Heavy stock is great because it's literally what it's made for. And the bonus with heavy stock is it has a very smooth um, surface. So there's this is the white heavy stock, which is just white, you know, good stuff. There's also the, the original heavy stock, which has a more cream color. We've got the craft that I... Craft heavy stock is on its own. But... You just need something that will hold up to lots of water, etc. And the reason I say that is if you use like just regular cardstock, it will sometimes work. But a lot of times you'll start, if you start noticing that it's like starting to pill, you know, layers are starting to come off or it's starting to shred or everything starts just looking really, really blurry, you know, it's the paper because it's not meant, you know, to hold up to water. So heavy stock, love this stuff. So heavy stock background stamp and then I thought this time because I'm going to do ink smushing and there's going to be a lot of water I'm going to stamp the text in archival ink because it is permanent and ain't going nowhere you know well we'll we'll see so yes hello to all my peoples so I'm using vintage photo archival we're going to add some brown you know I'm just channeling Mr. Tim Holt because, you know, his love of brown, which you can't go wrong with it, you know. I did a video just the other day, and I did the entire card in nothing but browns. It was fun. Totally out of my wheelhouse, because that's not normally what I go for. I like the bright colors. But I thought, why not? Why not? Okay. So, and yes, for those watching live... You can expand the description box under the video and there is a form near the top that you can fill out to your name and mailing address and we will pick a winner. Ooh, that is going to be dark. Do I want it that dark? We're going to go with it. We're going to go with it. Let's just see what happens because we're adding stuff on top of it. So you can add your name and address and we'll pick a winner or two. I'm not 100% certain I'm going to do two cards. We'll see what happens today because it might it might just be one I, I make zero promises I tend to usually make two you know all the time but sometimes one is more than enough <laughs> we shall see anyway archival ink is permanent will not react with water won't really react with anything 
Um, fade resistant, multi-surface, heat set on all surfaces. Technically, yes, you are supposed to heat set it, but when it's on like porous things like paper, I've never heat set my archival. I just don't care. I don't care. It's all good. And then we'll quickly clean that off because I'm not using that again. I'm pretty sure my stamp scrubber, just before anyone asks, I think I have it linked in my most used tools, which I link also below the video. So, yeah. Okay. Yes, brown coffee mixed media. It was fun. And you guys, I, I, I think I even said it in that video that it took everything in me <laughs> not to add other colors. Like, I was just, I was determined. I was like, I can do this. I can do a card in just brown, you know? It's fun. So anyway, okay. Stamp those, those two. Just gave it that. That's, that was that on that. Let's put this over here. That over there. That over there. So we got that. Then we're going to do some ink smushing. So we got my little, this is my little craft mat. This is also key. This one specifically is just the replacement mat for the big Tim Holtz gloss mat. This, this one from Tonic makes it. Comes in multiple sizes. It's got little silicone backing, everything. The reason I, I reiterate that is because surface matters when you're ink smushing. If I was to ink smush directly on glass, you get just get a putt on backing. I'll show it quick. Why not? So let's take a little of our ink. You know, you just you smush. You know, you got your ink. And then we're going to add a bit of water. Puddle. Does it work? Yeah. But it's not going to give you the same results. So surfaces do matter. So when you use this and then you add your ink and then you spray bubbles that's what you want that gives you the speckly fleckly again I'm like totally channeling Tim Holtz speckly fleckly goodness that's what we want so surface matters so a little non-stick craft sheet works wonders I need to get the smaller one with the big I have the big one with the weighted corners and stuff but that one takes up a huge amount of space so yeah, I want to get the smaller one that they just released like a week or two ago. I forgot, I think, to place it on my last order. I'll get to it. Whatever. Whatever. Anyway, so these are the colors we're going to use. Because I just, I grab ones that I, you know, combo I don't normally reach for. So we've got crushed olive, seedless preserves, speckled egg, and walnut stain. Let's just see what happens. So we're just going to add some ink. And I purposely pulled out the walnut stain because no matter what, green and purple, they're gonna make mud. But walnut stain was intentional, so it's just a, going to contribute to the mud. So we'll add some little mushy bits. Add some water so it's all bubbly. And then see what happens. Let me grab, kind of dab up some of the excess, go in there, go in there, get some more little mushy bits. Good. And since this is already like pretty much used up and I want to add layers, so then we'll dry in between the layers because wet on wet blends wet on dry layers. Can you check my links and make sure they're working? They should be. If you're having trouble with the links, if you are running any sort of ad blocker, one, YouTube really doesn't like those, but ad blockers will completely ruin any of the links I provide because I use affiliate links. Affiliate links is what helps me pay for the things and keep the lights on and, you know, 
buy us groceries. So generally, unless it's widespread and everyone's having a problem, because sometimes links do get broken, it happens. But if it's just you, 99% of the time, it's because there's an ad blocker being run and I can't do anything about that. I remember the first coffee card I ever saw you make. Did you use a real coffee card? I did one and I linked to it at that one I posted. The video I posted the other day with the brown coffee card. Either in the cards that appear in the upper right corner or in the end screen. I can't remember where, but I did link to the a coffee card I did a couple a few months ago. And that one, yes, I actually used a coffee cup and um, stamped with a coffee cup. So that's fun too. I was going to do it on that card, but... I've already done it, so I mix things around. Okay, I'm going to add a bit more speckled egg to the next layer because I, I love that blue color. It's just delicious. Such a pretty color. So because this one's so pale, we're going to add more. More of the blue. And then go a little lighter. So I'm just kind of using the edge of the ink pad with the other colors. Because they're all like they're very intense. Like crushed olive is a pretty intense green. Seedless preserves is a very intense, amazing, fabulous purple. And then walnut stain is walnut stain. It's just, it's just nice. I'll just kind of stick a little bit of that in there. And then you just repeat. Yes. So now we're getting more intensity. This is where things start getting fun. And same thing. You gotta layer and dry. Um, use cookie cutters too. Yep. Really, you can stamp with pretty much anything. You know? Anything can be a stamp if you put your mind to it. But yeah. process would be a great project yeah we'll see we'll see when it comes to the two of us crafting together it's just it's a little bit of a logistical um, nightmare I was literally about to say it stop stealing my words logistical <laughs> nightmare yes it's 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 not easy it's fun I definitely enjoyed it. He enjoyed it. We'll do it again. We will. It's just, again, it's it's not. That was kind of, it was like a holiday special. <laughs> it was. And, and there will be holiday specials in the future, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. There will be. It's, we, I'm not even kidding. And we said that in the video. We had to haul one of our, like, um, kitchen island stools which has this, like, I'm not even joking. Like, this, ooh, hit my microphone. Ridiculously huge base to it this big circle like it uh, we had to haul that in here and again like i said I, it is a nightmare i have cords and and things and stuff all over the floor I'm, mm, I'm working on it working on it there's not a lot of alley space there is no space we can't you literally have to kind of squeeze through things and duck under things and mm. you know you guys only see a tiny little bit and we we leave it at that i'm fine with that but it gets a little it gets a little touch and go sometimes. So, and then anytime we change it, like introducing a second person or anything, it just, yeah. Anyway, I'm going to add a little bit more of the speckled egg again. Because we're just going to add just another layer and be done with it, I think. Because I'm kind of happy with how these colors have done their thing. Because there is, when you're doing multiple colors with ink smushing, there is a limit. You know, after a while, you can only add so many layers before it just becomes a literal muddy mess or just... Mm. So my rule of thumb, within reason, if I'm doing ink smushing with multiple colors, is I usually stop at about three, four layers max. Um, and then that's it. Because I just find if you do too much, it just, it just gets icky. Um, and for those that um are new or have never done ink smushing stick to like colors at the at the beginning like do just blues or just purples or colors that play very well together so like blue and purple 
green and yellow. You know, that sort of a thing. Then you don't have to worry about mud and just play with it and experiment. And it's fun. Um, so, yeah. Is that cardstock okay for Copic? I wouldn't use it for Copics. You can. I've never bothered. I save my heavy stock for heavy water techniques. I will not use it for Copic coloring because I find that is completely overkill. And you're going to find that it's going to absorb a lot of your alcohol markers. And I just wouldn't do it. So, yeah. Okay. Um, this is Distress Heavy Stock. Everything I've used is listed and linked in the description box under the video. Let's do this again. So this was the first one. And that, that is the fun thing. Again, I might not get both cards done today. It's just going to depend. But it is one of the reasons why I love doing things like this. Because we're going to do the exact same thing on this panel. It's not going to look anything like the first one. You know, it's it's going to be completely different. And that's half the fun is especially with ink smushing. It doesn't matter how many times you do it. It is different every single time. So that's why it's one of one of my favorites um, as far as little like techniques and stuff go, because yeah, it's magic every time you can't predict it. So we just mush all the colors onto here just kind of squeezing in a little walnut stain here and there Let's set that one aside for now there we go and then just the first layer just slap it in there you know get some more of that blue and that dab up some of the excess Kind of muck with it a bit. Yeah. Okay. <sighs> I've been watching you as the Tim Holtz heat tool to dry your work. Would a heat gun work as well or is it too hot? They reach roughly the exact same temperature. The only difference is... And I... Yeah. Heat tool by Ranger. Basically same temperature, which I don't know offhand. It's high. Super, super high. However, this tool has a big nozzle and it disperses the heat. Real nice. Something like an embossing gun or this, like the wag, you know, the big daddy Wagner. Narrow. And it concentrates, like just blasts that heat directly at something. It reaches the temperature faster. I use this for heat embossing. You can use it to dry. And I've shown it in videos. Like I would just hold this and and this one does have two speeds. Low and high. So you can use the low speed. It works. But for, for demonstration purposes, aka I can still talk in the microphone a lot easier. And this is not near as loud. It's just nice. Can you heat emboss with this? Yes, it'll take you 10 times longer. I literally way like this is over a decade ago. I got rid of my original Ranger heat it tool because I that's all I thought it was for was to heat emboss. And I thought they were completely insane because I was like, this is the dumbest thing I've ever used. It takes me like an hour. I'm exaggerating, but it took way too long to heat emboss. And I'm like, who has time for this? Like, this is so dumb. So I got rid of it because I didn't understand how it worked. And then I repurchased it once I understood. <laughs> I used it for drying. So that's the difference. Oh. And yes, I appreciate the reminders for thumbs up and stuff like that. It does. It helps. It helps. The, the robot overlords enjoy the sacrifices of the thumbs up. Basically the easiest way to... It has nothing to do with, it's not about a popularity contest or anything like that. And I only bring that up because the same thing. I've had people complain about that too. You already have enough thumbs up. Why should I give you more? Like, okay, I'm sorry it hurt you. Like, show me on the doll where it hurt you. <laughs> no, it has to do with the algorithms and engagement and uh, analytics. So much analytics runs my life. I don't like it. I don't like the analytics at all. Let's add a bit more purple this time. Just, just 
here's and there's. But yeah, the thumbs up, they, they help. Thumbs up, engagement, people watching, thumbs upping, commenting, all the things makes a difference. Really does. It really does. Okay. And I appreciate it. I appreciate you guys hanging out with me. It still boggles my mind. I'm like, people actually want to watch me? What the heck? It's weird. It's weird. Okay. Um. <laughs> see, we're, yeah, we, we're in the same boat. I know. I know. I still kick myself because I'm also pretty sure I had a white one, which I don't know why that like is cool to me, but I'm pretty sure my original one was white and not black. You know, I don't, they don't even make them anymore. And it's just, yeah. But yeah, that was many years ago. And once you know certain tools do certain things, it, uh, it makes a difference. And then you have less frustration, you know, trying to get things to work. Okay. Okay. Let's try this. The heat, it looks like a hair dryer. Yes, but do not use it on your hair. <laughs> do not use it on your hair. Um, and people have asked me that because I have been asked that many times a week. Like, well, can I just use a hair dryer? For something like this, you technically could. Totally. And I've actually, I have a very, very old video. Old, 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 like 15 plus years. Um, it was like a little stickles hack video I showed. It was a quick, I used to do like, quick tips video. That's what it was. And it was drying something like stickles and using a hairdryer. Works great. I won't bring my hairdryer into my craft room. One, because I use it to actually dry my hair. And two, it's noisy. And it, but the, I will not use a hairdryer as well because it forces air. Not as much heat, a lot of air. So you've got stuff blowing all over the place. So I don't like a hairdryer in the craft room. You know, this is just convenient. So there's my, there's more, my two cents. Why not smush directly on your glass mat? You have to go back and watch from the beginning because I literally showed and explained that exactly why. I had a white one too. I know, you know, it's, it's silly. Like certain colors of tools, it, I know. I know, I know. I, I I literally, that is one of the few things I actually regret is getting rid of that tool because I legit thought that it was so useless. And it wasn't. It wasn't. It was great. But now I know how to use it. However, if you have something like the Wagner, I think the WOW heat embossing tool, I'm not sure, also has two settings. And that's kind of nice. They'll work. Like, if you have one of these, do you need this? No. You know? You don't need it. But it is nice to have. And it's, this isn't super expensive. I think it's like 25 or $30. Yeah. I think. I forget. This one's a bit, this one's a bit more. This one's a little bit of an investment. Worth it. Worth it. So worth it. Okay. I'm going to do one more layer again of just the blue. Thirty dollars. Okay. Again, worth it. But if you've already got one of them, like a heat tool, you can use your heat tool. It's fine. It's fine. You could use a diffuser from the hair dryer. Yeah, you could. Um. Oh, for the embossing tool, no. Do not connect anything. Don't even try it. I would not connect anything to these you are literally asking for a fire hazard. Like these things get so hot. I, even a hair dryer type tool, like a diffuser or anything like that. Um, I would never, I wouldn't. If it's not intended specifically for that tool, I would never connect anything to them. Um, because you could start, it would start melting things that aren't supposed to be melted and you could end up with like a serious fire hazard. Um, but yes, using like a hair dryer with a diffuser, it, totally would work to dry your your little art stuff and backgrounds and stuff that's fine it would work okay okay i'm gonna stop mucking with this i'm fine with it it's good okay the wow one has two settings yeah so you could totally use the 
um, wow heat tool as well on a lower setting to dry your stuff. You can use it on the, the high speed as well. Like it's fine. You just got to move it a bit more and it's a little more noisy. That's it. That's it. Nothing, nothing crazy. Okay. That's done. Let's put this away for the moment. Okay. Um, welcome, Pam. Welcome to the chaos. The, the chaos of my lives. Because they usually are chaotic. <laughs> okay. Gonna wipe that down. Roll it up. Um, okay. And then, so there we go. Two backgrounds using the exact same colors. Totally different. And again, to quote Tim Holtz, paper does not have a memory. So when they're curled up like that after using lots of liquid and heat, you can do that. You can also put coffee paper on them, run them through your die cut machine to flatten them out. If you have the time and patience, stick them under something heavy. You know, flat and heavy, stack of books, whatevs. Um, that'll work too. If you want them like super flat, I'm not too concerned about it, but that is, those are ways to do it. This one is still, I can feel it. It's still wet. You love chaos? Oh, you have no idea. <laughs> uh, I tend to invite it unintentionally. It just gets served to me, really. And then sometimes I do like to poke the bear. That's just life. Okay, so there's my backgrounds. This one's not open. So, for the technique that I've never done before, literally, I'm 99.9% I'm .9 positive. I'm, oh, mm, I don't think I've ever done it on camera. I don't think I've ever done it in real life. Okay, these are all good to go. We are gonna use crackle paste and embossing glazes and i'm pretty sure i remembered because the reason too that i picked these out and i'm almost positive i linked to it in the description box below to the entire distress embossing glaze line at simon's the stamp because these are on sale this month they're they're celebrating it has been 20 years since tim holtz released his first distress product which is insane to me like not surprised but still insane it's been 20 years so to celebrate they're doing like an entire year of like promos, giveaways, all the things. Just stay tuned. But for this month, embossing glazes on sale, 20% off, got the link, got the code, all the things. For those that aren't aware, embossing glaze. It is embossing powder. The difference between this and your typical embossing powder is these are tinted to distress colors. So this is speckled egg, seedless preserves. Amazing. All, you know, the distress colors. They're tinted and they are also transparent. So if I was to just like cover this in speckled egg, you would still see the writing, you, some of the color would still come through, etc. because these are transparent. So there's there's lots of things. And for if people have zero clue, Tim Holtz has an entire, like multiple videos, but he has videos on his channel and he gives techniques, one of which I'm gonna do but techniques and explanations and all the things. So I'm not gonna reinvent the wheel and chirp back all his info. If you want product info on distressed products, go to Tim Holtz's channel because he gives it all. So what we're gonna do though, is we're gonna apply it over crackle paste. Hence me wanting to get this part done so the crackle paste and everything can, can dry. And then we're gonna melt it and it's gonna hopefully look amazing. And like I said, I've never done this. I know how it works. I've just never done it. So it's, things are going to get interesting. <laughs> uh, so I have a stencil. This is the one I chose to use. Do I have the name of it? Is it here? Yeah, this is the Geo Leaves stencil. So where do you find your color inspiration? My head, more often than not. <laughs> Literally, I was just like looking at all the colors and I was like, I want a brown. And I was like, speckled egg would look nice with that. And I was like, what else should I do? And then I was like, see those preserves. And I was like, I need a green. Let's do crushed olive. So, okay. We've got the geo leaf stencil. Crackle paste. Uh, palette knife. Okay. And then we're going to make a mess. Let's just 
let's just do it and see what happens. So, uh, mm, I gotta get things I've written. This is where things get a little iffy because you gotta do this and not knock them over. Okay, so I'm gonna get everything ready to go first. Get it out of this. And then, yep. And, ooh, that one just made a mess. Don't really care, whatever. Got that, got that. Scrap paper. Scrap paper. Okay. So, you take your, your crackle paste. Get a good old blob of it. And then we're just gonna apply it. It doesn't need to be perfect. Perfection is overrated. Plus it also looks cool when you let it be a little more, a little more organic, a little more messy. See, I nearly knocked over one of them. This is why I don't do stuff like this very often. Ah, okay. Not really worried about the edges anyway, because I'm probably going to trim this down before I actually put it on the card. This is good. We're good. This is good. We're fine with this. Okay. So, start there. Let's set this aside for a second, because I want to get this on here, and then we'll go to the next one. So, which means I need to, I'll just wrap my palette knife in a baby wipe. Set the lid on there. We'll get to that in a second. So... We're just gonna take the embossing glaze and we're gonna sprinkle it on here. And if it really bothers you to touch embossing glaze like this or like embossing powder in general, because it is, it's a texture thing, I get it. You can take a little spoon or you could take a little, um, like a straw. And you can cut a little straw and use that as kind of a little scoop. I This doesn't bother me. Other things, like stuff that's sticky, that kind of stuff bugs me. But this doesn't bother me. So you just want to sprinkle it on here. And you want to do it while, the, while this paste is wet. Because once it's dry, it's dry. It's not going to it's not gonna do anything. It's not going to hold on to anything. So we're just going to somewhat loosely follow where the colors are on these backgrounds but at the same time I'm not overly concerned about it you know it doesn't really matter okay. and then the beautiful fiddles I borrowed sprinkle that on there And there's one there, and there, and then some of the walnut stain. And I purposely went with just opaque crackle paste. One, there is transparent crackle paste. It gives a totally different look. Again, check out Tim Holt's video. He actually showed examples of it. It doesn't crackle the same with the transparent and I want the crackle that's that's the fun and I went with this because for me this stuff dries still fairly quickly um but I'll do another video I'm gonna use do this basically the same technique but it's over um transparent grit paste it ends up looking like glass it's the it's the neatest thing but that stuff takes forever to dry and it's not something I'm going to do on a live because I literally have to do it and then set it aside. And sometimes it takes hours usually for um, translucent grit paste to dry. Okay, so I've got it all on here. And then the other little magical thing is you do a tappity tap. So you tap from beneath. And it bounces around and it looks super fun. And this just gets the powders to really start sticking to other areas because the minute I turn this and flip, it's all just gonna go, bleh, you know? So if you do the little, the little tappy tap, oh, thank you. I know, um, thank you, I appreciate it. So you do the little, I gotta keep moving you guys. <laughs> and then you tap off. 
the excess. So right now it kind of looks like a hot mess. I'm fine with it. I'm fine with it. This is the background. You know, we got other things that are going here, but right now it just looks like this, but we're going to set it aside and we're going to let it dry. And I actually managed to do pretty decent. There's not much on here. I'm going to dress it because I, people are going to like be like, oh, I'm throwing this out. I don't care. But you can do party, like, because also these four colors together, no matter what, this makes mud. This is mud. Tim Holtz refers to like the party mix. You can take your powders, put them, if you have a separate little container, you can save them all into there. Because these are transparent and the colors mix together, it's, it's just going to be a mud mix, really. Um, again, if you wanted to mix something like blue and purple, like those two together would probably be gorgeous. That sort of a thing. But this, I'm just gonna... It's gone. We're not gonna worry about it. It's fine. It's fine. So, it costs more, in my opinion, to, like, get a container and save it and then never use it. Never use it. So, we'll come back to the backgrounds after they're dry because the thing is you cannot melt that embossing powder until um until the paste is dry because paste what where you can somewhat speed up the drying process and i've done it especially with crackle paste with my ranger heat it tool but you got to be careful because you'll notice if you're paste and you've been impatient and you're you know blasting it with your heat tool to get it dry it'll start to bubble because it's just, it's being overheated. It's not, paste is not meant to handle high amounts of heat. So then to be able to melt embossing powder at a much higher heat, the paste needs to be dry. Otherwise you're gonna end up with a bubbly mess, which could be the look you're going for, that's great. But you want the paste to fully dry before you start blasting it with all the heat. Also, can I get some assistance on Tate Intern? I need you to open that container that's full of water. <laughs> Because now that I've done this part, because I need to use this stencil for the inside of the card. So if you can open the container of water. Again, the joys of doing this live. At least I remembered, though, to get it, to get it ready. So if you get the lid off so we can throw these in here and then that'll just clean up. Perfect. Make sure you just poke it down. Okay. Back to what I was doing here. So, background number two. We're going to do the exact same thing. So, I'm going to start with my... And it's already... Like, I didn't apply very good. There was, like, chunky bits because I hadn't cleaned off the stencil. Don't care. I don't care. That's that's part of the fun, really. And plus, this will crackle. And that's also why I went with the opaque crackle paste. Because I've done many videos using crackle paste. I've talked about it many times. I love crackle paste. It's... I don't know what it is. It's just satisfying. You know, those little crackles and the texture and all the things. So this will dry. And as it crackles, it's going to pull apart all those powders. It's it's going to be cool. Just just st stick with me. You know, I, I, I sort of know what I'm doing. <laughs> Talking about this like I know. I've never done this technique. I know how it works. I've just never done it. So, again, you guys get to be guinea pigs with me on my live. We'll just we'll just see what happens. Who knows? I might end up with no cards in the end. <laughs> it might be a fail. Just a fail. Okay. Okay. Um, so, yeah. You just pinch these. And it doesn't... Also, it doesn't have to be like the embossing glazes. <clears throat> you can do this with any embossing powder. Just the beauty of embossing glazes, obviously, is they coordinate with distress colors. And, and then the transparency. For other techniques, the glazes are nice, you know. But you can totally do this with any embossing powder. But yeah, glazes just have their own little unique, cool things that they can do. And if you like Tim Holtz stuff like I do, it just you know, you purchase them. Like I purchased all the embossing glazes and then I hardly ever use them. And then made the decision to start actually showing them in videos because they're pretty sitting in their drawer, but they're even more fun when you actually start playing with them. So we're just gonna keep wrinkling these guys on here. Get some going in there. Okay. 
think I got lots. Yeah. So then we do the tappy tap again. You just kind of like, that's all you're doing, you know? And it just makes the embossing patterns, the glazes are just bouncing. Moves them around a bit. Add a little bit more to some areas. Add some more here. Oh, and also I should mention, one, I obviously did not invent this technique. Um, technically, with most techniques, no one did. However, I want to give credit where credit is. Not only did Tim Holt show this, but Tim gave credit. It was Stacy Hutchinson. She's one of Tim Holt's makers. I am a huge fan of hers. That uh, sp spooky skies technique I've done many times, during, mostly during Halloween. She's the one who came up with that. She is brilliant. So she's the one who like figured this out and posted it. And it was like, you're amazing. You're so creative and talented. Like she's just crazy talented. So yeah, Stacy Hutchinson. If you're not familiar with Tim Holtz makers, same thing. Go to his website. He has them all listed linked. You can find them. You can find their websites, their social media, all the things. Cause oh, do they, like the amount of insane talent those people have. It's Crazy. I got to meet Stacy at Create last year. So her and Paula, who is like Tim's right hand. So I got to meet Stacy and Paula and I got, I posted picture, a picture with them on my Facebook and I think on my Instagram. Amazing, amazing people. They're fabulous and just crazy talented. Okay. Uh, nope, dude. I am live, kiddo. Chris is going to deal with that. Okay, I gotta clean up. Oh, I got a mess going on here. <laughs> so same thing. This is what we have now. Just crackle paste and embossing glaze. Just, you know, that's just meh. So same thing. Gotta, gotta set those aside to let them dry. Ooh, and Kath is here. Kath is another one of Tim's makers. She is phenomenal. So, hello, Kath. And, yes. Okay. Um, anyway. Anyway. I missed. I might have missed. I was, I was concentrating. Let's put the lids on these. <laughs> Before I, like, actually clean up a bit. Let's just get the lids on these so I don't knock them over. Get in your home. There you go. There you go. Oof, I'm sweating. Sweating. <laughs> I am sweating. I made a serious mess. There we go. Okay, that's better. Not quite so bad. Huh. Let's move those out of the way. Okay, this thing. Let's do that. Let's take just a little Swiffer cloth just to wipe up those powders. Do I even want to know what the interruption was for? He couldn't get his pants on. <laughs> I tied them in a bow. <laughs> ah, children. Anyway. Okay. I, ooh, I got, I got paste and stuff stuck to me. Give me a sec. I need to wipe my hands. I'm mm, getting that cringy feeling. Okay. Oh, okay. Ah. Oh. Oh. oh, keep blushing, Kath. You are. You're a phenomenal maker. Sheesh. Oh, the things you do with color and just all of it. I have so many of your, your creations bookmarked because I'm just like, I need to make that. <laughs> so many. Uh, I'll get to it. I'll get to it. Okay. There we go. Mostly clean space for the, for the most part, within reason. Okay. So I did all of that. That was kind of like the bulk of it, really. And then I want to do, I got that out and that out. Because you got to put a bird on it, you know. Um, mm, mm. And yes, it's not super cold here anymore. Thank goodness. We're sitting in a balmy, what are we, a negative 12? 12 or something like that. Yeah, negative 12 negative. Celsius. Way better than the negative 55 we were at last week. Did you get snacks? I had a 
Oh, boring snacks, not good snacks. We still gotta get you more peanut M&M's. Yes, we do. Ugh, I got sticky bits. Okay, back to what I was doing. Okay, let's use, um, okay, so I got my little birds. I'm only gonna need, I was thinking it would be cute to have a bird sitting on here. So I think what I want, yeah, it's just these guys. And then, because you gotta put a bird on it. I've talked about this many times um, in past videos. And it's just funny. You know, the things we get um, hung up on. And one of the ones that I was hung up on for a really long time was bird images. I just couldn't do it. Um, no real rhyme or reason. It was mostly just I couldn't do it because I was... I don't know. I got hung up on it in a weird way and was like, well, I don't know anything about birds. And I don't know how they're supposed to look like in nature. It's a lot of work. Blah, blah, blah. And then, yeah, pulled my head out of my rear and was like, they're cards. Who cares how they look in nature? Seriously. Because, you know, I get comments all the time from people. It's like, oh, X, Y, Z, this type of floral or this type of this or whatever it is. It's like, that doesn't appear in nature. And I'm like, so? It's a card. Who, who cares? <laughs> who cares? It's art. It's fun. You know? Don't worry about it. Stick a bird on it. It works great. So we're going to die cut our little birdies. And then we're just going to use those distress things to paint the pieces. The cards I make during my lives, like today, I we draw and I give them away. So I mail them to the winners. Other cards that I make, I send to my Patreon supporters. Depending on the tier they've signed up for, they get my... Okay, that's garbage. I don't need that. I don't need that. I send a bunch to them. Some of the cards, personal use. Other ones, sometimes I send to the brands I work with because they'll use it for advertising, etc. And then at times, I've also sold my cards. I'm not currently doing that. Um, I used to sell them online. I used to have like an Etsy shop and everything, but that turned into a nightmare of a process. So I quit doing that. And I don't think I'll ever go back to it because I don't have time for it. But yeah, that's what I do with my cards. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, not only am I sweating, my nose is also running. <laughs> gotta go live you gotta go live okay okay so i got my little pieces of my birds this time i'm gonna leave there's little tiny teeny tiny die cuts for the eyes i'm gonna leave those out because i'm actually just gonna put a little like rhinestone for that because it'll just be cute and just saves me the effort and then i just have when i'm dealing specifically with die cuts and you can tell die cuts that i want to do little bits of watercoloring on not ink blending. I don't like using these for ink blending, but I like it for watercoloring because they're a little stickier. So I'm just going to stick my little bodies there. And this mat has been used. I just rinse this off in water. It gets stained. I don't care. Is this part of it? I don't think so. I think that was just a scrap that I don't need. We got like the little wing pieces. We got all our little wing pieces. And oh, we'll just stick there. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. And then we got a little face piece. Let's get that little. Mm, get out. Don't want you there. Stick that there. And stick that there. So we got our little pieces. That's all we're doing. Because we're only doing two birds. We don't need to do the rest. They're super cute though. So, nope. We're only doing two. Don't overdo it, Amy. We're live. So the goo for the inside. We're just going to stencil on the insides of the cards. I'm going to keep it a little simpler. Okay, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Just like so. And then... Okay. Um, same. Love them. They're so fun. Okay. Okay. So, got that. And then we're just going to use the exact same distress inks I did for the background. We're just going to, let me see if I can kind of go like that. 
we'll do the brown. So we got a little bit of walnut stain. We'll do the second. We'll do probably do all the colors because why not? Walnut stain. I gotta re-ink my little speckled egg, dude. I have used this one a lot. Still so petty in my paper. Maybe a little, maybe a little green. Why not? Why not? These little birds live just in my imagination. Okay. So also I die cut these from heavy stock as well, just to keep life simpler. Watercolor paper watercolor paper would also work. Do whatever works for you. And we'll do their little bodies with the speckled egg. And this is just a little Tim Holtz detail watercolor brush. The same one I've been using for, I have lost track of how many years now. It's all stained. Like the little bristles are stained. I don't care. I don't care. And then, do, 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 let's do a little bit of crushed olive. And then, see if this preserves. Why not? Yep. That works. That's it. That's all you got to do. It's super simple. Okay. Wipe that down. Okay. And then, yeah, we'll let that dry for a minute or two. It won't take very long. So let me zoom back out again. There we go. Okay. And then, sentiment. Oof, which needs to be stacked, which I couldn't make up my mind when I was planning out these cards, I think. Oh, it's already starting to crackle. Yee. Look at the crackly bits. It's not dry, it's not ready yet, but it's doing its thing. Love it. Let's do the sentiment in white for now. I might ink blend over it. We'll see. Let me just grab pieces of white cardstock. Yep, this will work. And we will die cut this sentiment a couple times. Because we got to stack that up to give it that dimension. Because dimension is life. As we all know, or if you don't know, FYI, I'm now informing you, Dimension is Life. Did I open this up? Oh, thank you, Betty Ann. Thank you. I appreciate it. Okay. This is going to be one, two, three, four. Still going through that. We, we might get two cards. We'll see. we'll see. We'll see. This is getting a little crazy. Anyway, put that away. Let's start die cutting. Get that in there. Okay. Okay. Hello to Australia. Oh, there's a there's there's a tittle. <laughs> so we need to save that. So I'll just pop it in one of my little triangle trays so I don't lose it. I think that's the only one. Yes. So we will save those. I'll deal with popping out the other bits after I'm done die cutting all of the things. Okay, because we got a die cut. Many, many layers. Thank you, Elizabeth. I appreciate it. Thank you. Ooh, ooh, don't want to lose that. Don't care. J 
Getting your home. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate it. Okay. Let's, let's keep going. We're just going to keep die cutting till I get all these sentiments die cut. I know, right? Uh, welcome to the dark side. I started with the mini empress and was like, this is a pretty awesome machine. I now got the big daddy empress love. And I just use my mini plates in it with stuff like if I'm die cutting anything small enough basically to fit on the mini plates. You don't need them. I just, I already had them. And I only have space for one thing on my desk. And I, in fact, I had to rearrange literally everything to be able to fit my Empress onto my desk. But it would help if I added cardstock to this. Did I just toss the card? I don't even want to know. I don't want to know. Whatever. Um, yeah. The mini plates fit in the big machine, which is sweet. Okay. Is the mini Empress the same size as the little? Oh no, Tim Holtz little one is about the roughly say like this big, sort of. The the mini Empress is more than twice the size of that. The Tim Holtz one is great. Having a little tiny, um, a little tiny manual die cut machine, awesome. You know, especially for like those little tiny dies we like to use. I use my little manual machines a lot as well. So yeah, totally different size though. The mini Empress is a good two, almost three times the size of it, really. It's still small. I can't show it on camera because I would literally have to. Mm, give me a sec. Like, I'm always like, oh, we don't have enough time. And then I'm going to do stuff like this. I don't care. Whatever. It's my life. I can do what I want. Okay. Just give me. This is going to be a little interesting because I can't, I don't have like a die cut machine camera. I wish I did. Oh, I don't think I'm going to be able to do this. Am I going to be able to do this? I might be like totally overstepping myself. I can't. I can't get it out. I've got my little mini guy underneath some stuff up here. It's, it's too big. He's, he's about this big. Just picture my hands. <laughs> it's about this big. <laughs> And I don't have my Tim Holtz one handy. I've got one. That one is, I don't have it handy to show it. I would, but I'm sure somebody now I have to move like all the things. Okay. Are we good? Everything's good. We're good. We're good. We're good. It's fine. I tried. I tried. Uh. Yes. The mini Empress is great. And the big one is just... I do, and because I do this as a job, I do a lot of die cutting. So, uh, I my only regret is not setting up the Empress sooner. Because I had had it for a couple months before I even got to unbox it. But then I had to take stuff off my desk. Because I have, again, we talked about this beginning, I, the amount of like the lights and microphones and cords and just the amount of things that are hooked up here. It's a lot. It's intense. And I had to move things around very, very carefully in order to fit stuff. And that's why I don't change things hardly ever. Because you change one thing, then you have to change like 30 other things. And it's not fun. Anyway. There we go. Okay. One more. And you know, so I'm, I'm keep, I move the, the die around. And I do this always. Especially if I'm die cutting something over and over and over again. I move the die around. I move the die around. I flip my plates, you know, do, 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 do constantly. That is just habit to help prevent warping with this plate. And I've been using this one for a, almost a year. This is the same cutting plate. And I only use one cutting plate for cutting on. That's the original, you know, it's, it's got no cuts in it. But yeah, that's been used for a year and it's straight. Not warped. It's another reason why I love the Empress machine there we go okay get in your home okay 
Now we just need the the tittle to the eye. <laughs> what? I am being informative and crawling things by their proper name. It's a tittle. I can't help it that you're immature. <laughs> uh, anyway. <laughs> anyway. Now we get to pop all the little pieces out of here. And then of course I'm not even going to do it this lot, but I can't imagine with all the cameras and mixing lights. Oh yeah, there's, it's, it's insane. It's more and, of a studio than a crafting. Yeah, it is a studio in a sense, and just, yeah, and it's all hooked up to very, very expensive equipment, etc., and yeah, that's why, and Chris has learned to tread carefully, <laughs> tread carefully around all the things, because, yeah, it's. Everything's just jury rigged into the craziest spots too. It's it's a little nuts. I I I make it work, you know. Me and my garage space. Okay. So we got some die cuts. Oh, my spellbinders plates aren't warped really at all. Uh, like but same thing, I I rotate my Spellbinders plates because for a manual machine, I love my Spellbinders Platinum and Platinum 6. And yeah, I do the exact same thing with it. I rotate the plates always. And I've only had one plate kind of warp and not in a way, it kind of it bubbled more than anything. And it was because like, I, I use my plates until there's nothing left of them. Like, I use them way longer than even I would recommend, because it's like, I'll start getting, you know, the cardstock hairs. Like, I need to change that Empress plate soon, because, again, I do, like, commercial level of die cutting. But I hold out for, a like, just stub pure stubbornness. So, can't help it. Just what I do. Okay, let me get rid of those little... Those little bits. And then we're gonna stack these together with some craft jacket glue. Okay. Um. And they're kind of sticking together. Get out of there. All right. So now my glue's clogged, which happens all the time. Get take a pin. There we go. Oh, of course, I clogged it good, didn't I? This is what happens when you leave your glue open and forget about it all the time. I can literally see it in the lights that it's, like, super clogged. Get out of there. Good job, Amy. Good job. There we go. I have the big Spellbinders machine, same thing. Never had a problem with warping. Because that's the Platinum machine, is the, is the big, the big manual machine from Solar. The Platinum 6 is a smaller one. I have both. And, yeah, love them. Absolutely love them. Okay, just using some little bits of Craft Tacky glue. There we go. Gonna stack these sentiments together to create dimension. Just like so. Perfection. Um, you should have put adhesive on the back of the cardstock before you cut it to make it easier to stick. If you want to, you can. Like, you do you. I don't have a problem using um, my liquid adhesive. I really only use 
like adhesive sheets or like my Xyron machine and stuff when I absolutely did. It just depends on the look I'm going for or whatever, but I don't use that kind of stuff like consistently because you're, it's, it's expensive for one to be using that type of adhesive all the time. And two, this is no time at all. Doesn't phase me in the least. It's a little, I know, annoying to watch me do it live. I had hoped to have this done like off camera ahead of time, but I don't, I don't have much time in the day. Like, I'm scrambling right up until we go live doing all the things. Cause yeah, that's life. I was having a problem with my liquid glue this week because of the cold weather. Yeah, cold does affect especially adhesive. Um, so yeah, mine and they just, and I'm just awful. I normally, I'm, I'm leaving this like this all the time, you know, leaving it open while I'm working. So yeah, it's exposed to air. It, it, you know, gets a little bit of a glue goober in the tip and then it clogs. That happens. And that's why I just keep a pin cushion on my work surface always that one of my lovely subscribers sent to me many many years ago and I just I keep those pins on hand all the time and then that clog I pushed through earlier is now like making there it is found it anyway I just unclog it it doesn't really I don't know people get really upset about like oh, that glue clogs all glues clog <laughs> especially if you're like me and you leave it sitting open all the time like that's just what's gonna happen so yeah pins they come in handy I don't have to use them all the time but I have used them more often in the winter and when I'm not paying attention and not putting a lid on my glue so yeah um. it is it's it's one of those this is what I call like the mindless sort of a thing you know especially if I'm doing like a bunch at once or whatever this is where I can completely just zone out you know live in my head for a bit or usually I'm like watching a show listening to an audiobook I don't know planning the demise of my enemies <laughs> <laughs> you gotta find time for that yeah for sure. you gotta find time for that you know it's just you never know you never know where my mind's gonna go and the things that are going on in there. It's a dark place and usually pretty scary. Anyway, <laughs> I don't know where that came from. Anyway, <laughs> not necessarily planning. I guess I should say not necessarily planning their demise. More so wishing for like karma to hurry up and just take care of it for me. So yeah, just as we is. Ah. Yes, and yes, that is also, uh, thank you, Shauna. That's actually exactly why I prefer, um, there we go, liquid adhesive is it gives you wiggle room. You know, using any sort of like adhesive sheets, irons and stuff, more often than that, you've, if you're careful, you've got time to move things around. But it's a lot more finicky. Whereas this, I can zhuzh it. I can zhuzh it and get it where I want it to be. And we're good. There, we're done. We adhered the, the two, two pieces. Three pieces, three layers, three pieces. That's the sentiments. I think, do I want to add ink blending to them? I don't know, do I want to? I don't think I do. I think I kind of want to keep them white. Um, just trying to think. We can add a little bit of ink blending. Why not? Why not? You know, let me grab. Nope. That's the brush I want. Okay. Let's see what I've got on here because if I'm gonna ink blend, I'm gonna do it with the speckled egg. And should be good. Okay. Okay. Um, I was wondering if you'll order the intercut machine from Jimmy K. I have no plans to. Uh, I've had a lot of requests for it, but you got like that machine plus what it costs to ship to Canada is a hefty little investment. It'd be different if I was actually on the market, you know, needing a manual machine, but I have multiple machines. <laughs> so 
Yeah, and it's, you know, it is. It's sold out. It'll be back in stock, I think they said. Um, it, either February or later in the spring. I forget, because both her machines are, like, completely sold out. Um, but, yeah, they'll be restocked, and we'll just see. I just, yeah, for me, it's 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 a bit more of a hefty investment. And for me, it would be just so I could do like a review of it. And yeah, we'll, we'll just see what happens with all the things. But considering I had to invest in an entire new microphone setup, I've had to invest in some other equipment and we probably have some investments in other equipment to make other, like all the things work. Yada, yada, yada. I got to kind of pick and choose where I, where I'm able to do all the things. So anywho. I took my little brush and we're just doing just a simple little blend of the speckled egg. Nothing too crazy. Nothing too crazy. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Just. I'm just kind of holding it so that it doesn't, so I don't tear it. Although it's nice when it's all adhered like this. So there's three layers of thick cardstock glued together. It's got a good amount of strength. So it's fine, really. Oh, and I managed to get schmutz on it. Eh, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah, if you want to pin or tape your pins to your glue bottles, you can do that too. But yeah, I've got a a pin cushion. I don't keep straight pins. I just I have the cutest little pin cushion that um, Evelyn made for me. She sent me this years ago. It actually has coffee beans in it, and it gosh, she made this for me years ago. You can still smell the coffee. I just mm, love it. And you've got a face, and he's super cute. Yeah, I keep all my pins in here. Um. It just sits beside me on my desk. He has sat on my desk now for years, and I love it. He's adorable. He is adorable. Okay. So we just kind of faded out the the ink. Yeah, I'm happy with this. We're good. Well, thank you. I'm glad you like it. It's... <laughs> I, I'm not relaxing, usually. <laughs> That will forever be one of the, like, to me, to me, it's weird when people have come in and they're like, oh, I put your videos on to go to sleep to you. And I'm like, really? Okay. Okay. Well, you know, again, whatever floats your boat. I just, I get a kick out of it. Anyway, actually, we'll adhere our birds and then we'll come back to those backgrounds. Let's, let's do our little, our little birdies. We've got our little pieces here. So they're just these little guys, you know, it looks a little crazy because this, Stab and stick mat is a mess. And that's fine. So let's take them off the mat so that we can actually just see the pieces a little better. So we'll just we'll just get their little their little selves off there. So they're super simple to adhere. Eh. And then I can put that away because I didn't really get it mucky, so it's fine. Okay. Any plans on making mini Valentine cards? Probably not. I don't do mini cards very often. That's not my... Where's my glue? Right in front of my face. Good job, Amy. That sounds like a lot more work to do mm, No, they could be fun. I just don't... I don't really deviate a whole lot from what I like to do, I guess. Yeah. Well, doesn't matter. I think both these guys are like kind of the same size. Um, I think I have some that I've done in the past. I'm sure I have. Like, I have over two thousand, well over 2,000 videos on YouTube. <laughs> I've been doing this for a long time. So, very often, 
when people have like certain requests or like, oh, I wish you had done this or I'd wish you had used this thing. And I was like, there is a very good chance I have. Because, yeah, I have been posting uh, videos since 2009. Do you know if Simon carries a mini impress replacement plates? Linked. Already linked in the description. <laughs> I already linked to them because I use them. So I link to them because, yes, they do. Okay, so there's their, there's their little their little head. Simple. And then you do just the bigger wing and the smaller wing. That's it. And then if you die cut the little, you know, keep the little eyepiece, you could pop that in. And I've done that before. But like I said earlier, I'm just going to use a little, like, rhinestone to fill those in. Just because it'll look cute. So we'll just do that. Like so. Look at him. He's so adorable. Look at his little boards. You know, you know, he's all ugly. And then we'll just do that. And look at him. He's so cute and little. Now we'll just stick him over there. Okay. And, oh, why did I do the wrong wing, I think? That's why I wasn't paying attention. Good job, Amy. I did the wrong wing. Uh, oops. Well, I guess we're going to have to die cut one more piece, but that's okay. I wasn't paying attention. I need... I think I just need that one again. Yeah, that's what I did. Okay, where's my little scrap? There we go. So I keep all the scraps. We're just going to die cut. That. Because I missed it. This will only take me a second. Okay. Um, there we go. My youngest couldn't remember your name, so she called you the crafting queen. That's adorable. <laughs> so much better than the other names I get called. <laughs> I'm not, but that was really sweet. Uh, that's adorable. Okay. Better than what I call myself, which is usually just a hot mess. Because that's, that's, that's how it is. Okay. I don't need <laughs> those. Yeah, I like long... I don't know what I was doing. What was I doing? Who knows? Do that. And then this guy goes on there. Right? Yes. Okay. This works. This works. Let's just quickly, since it's one little piece, where's my water brush that I had? In? There it is. Derp, derp. We'll just go doop doop. Doop doop doop. There we go. Simple. So wipe off said brush. Wipe off the brush. Clean off the ink. That needs to just dry for a second. So while that little piece is drying i'm gonna take a, just a marker it doesn't matter what marker you use for something like this i'm gonna use a copic marker but it, it doesn't matter i'm just gonna color his teeny tiny little beak and yes i did say i wouldn't use heavy stock for copic coloring i don't consider this coloring this isn't like i would not stamp an image on heavy stock and color it same with like watercolor paper etc. I would not stamp an image and then color it with Copic markers because those papers are just meant to absorb and they will just start pulling all that liquid out of your alcohol markers. Your markers will go dry and they're expensive. But for little tiny little things like this or edging, cardstock, etc. I, it's irrelevant. And you can use, for something like this, you can use any black marker. It doesn't need to be a Copic marker. There we go. So then they've got their little, their little beaks. Just just cute. So we're good. It's good. It's fine. We're fine. Okay. Let me get all those little random pieces out of there. Um, I've never used a magic mat. I can't comment on it. I've never used one. I've never felt the need for one. Um, yeah, some people love them. Some people hate them. It's, it's one of those things I think we're just up to personal preference. Um, okay, 
this is basically dry for all intents and purposes because I didn't really like add much water to it. And I clogged my glue again because I got schmutz in there. Because of course, of course I did. No. Okay. There we go. Get back where you belong. Put that one in place. There you go. That'll work. That'll do, don't it? And then give me a second. Where you belong. There we go. Okay. Thank you, Leanne. Thank you. Now the unpaid intern isn't gonna starve. I can get him his peanut M and M's. Actually, it's not peanut M and M's. He's gonna get. We're getting mini eggs after this live because it is mini egg season. Oh, love. Something both of us are way too addicted to. True. But they're so good. Cadbury mini eggs for Easter. The lead up to Easter. I don't even know. Easter's early this year. I think. Is it? I think so. I think it's early. Okay. Okay. There's my little birdies. We'll add the eyes later. We'll get to it. They're they're good. It is early this year. Yeah, told you. March 29th. Okay. My backgrounds are almost dry. Not fully, but they're getting there. See how they're all crackly and amazing? Like, look at that. Look, 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 look at that crackle. Look at it. You know? But the, I can so you can tell when you put your hand underneath, whether it, it doesn't matter whether you use paste, watercolor, anything, and you're not sure one, it curls up because like the paste is going like. But if it feels cool underneath your project, if it feels cool, it's not dry. So I can just I can tell just by touching it, it's like it's dry. So we'll give it a little bit longer before we do the actual the actual magic. So. Which means, oh, I need to do the insides of my cards and I need to do, I was gonna die cut a couple leaves. Let's die cut the leaves first. Cause I think my plan was to have, you gonna sit on there like all super, you know? But then I was like, ooh, it needs some leaves. So I pulled out, this is the ab abundant leaves. I've used this many times, love it. Abundant leaves, oil for dye, which is just like a, and then I'm gonna use some vellum, which are you paying attention on paid intern? You need to link to the things, especially the vellum too. It's it's listed. I have it listed because I get asked a lot what vellum I use. I use Simon's stamp vellum. I have for years. Does this even have the? Yeah, Simon's stamp vellum. Been using it for years. It's just a nice. It's a nice weight. It's not super thin. Again, vellum all has its place. You know. I have many, many types of vellum, many different brands, different things. Some vellum is also very, very thick, which has its place as well, but it's more opaque. Simon's is just a good weight. I don't even, I can't remember. I think it might say with the listing specifically what weight it is, but I like it. I like Simon's vellum. It's, it's my good, it's my good go-to. Um, are you going to die cut the shadow for the sentiment? No, I'm not planning on it. Okay. Because I just want the smaller leaves, so these scraps will come in handy. Because again, I keep all of my scraps for all of the things because I use them all the time. I never reach or I never pull out a full sheet of cardstock or vellum or anything unless I've used up all the scraps first. Okay. So, we're gonna do, actually I'm gonna be able to get away with this with just this one piece. Yeah, because I just want the two smaller clusters here. Let's, where is my die? There's my die call plate. There we go. There we go. And we're 
green die cut. <laughs> And Vellum that was old enough to drink five years ago. <laughs> I love Vellum. Like, love Vellum. I use it a lot. It can be finicky, like, even now, this time. It didn't fully 100% cut, because, again, Vellum is is a, a tricky little beast at times. But more often than not, with things like this, I'll just take my scissors, even, and just kind of follow, because it's, it's there. It's almost cut all the way through. Like, and sometimes I'll get like the most intricate cuts, you know, through vellum and then other times like now, cause of course it's cause I'm live, you know, if I wasn't live, I wouldn't be having any problems, you know, you know, if something's going to go wrong, it's going to go wrong when you've got an, a live audience watching everything you do and listening to you. But yeah, but then all the, and because it's vellum, you know, all that piercing detail, everything makes it just crinkle up naturally, which I just, I love it. I love it. I love effects like that that require zero effort on my part. You know, I just ran it through a die cut machine. That's all I did. I didn't do anything else. And then same thing. It's and more often than not, it probably could just come apart. There we go. There we go. See, and it's all curled. Love it. Love it. Okay. Um, I will use some this week. I'll hold you to that promise. It's fun. I love vellum. I really, really do. Okay, will this fit? Maybe not. No. Darn it. Okay. Well, I'll save that piece for a different project. I just need to trim this one. There we go. And then also, too, you can also, if you're having trouble die cutting your vellum, because maybe your machine doesn't have enough pressure, etc., you can also add a, a little shim. Like add a little piece of cardstock, add a piece of copy paper, because vellum is much thinner than cardstock. So if you're finding it's just not cutting through, especially if it's anything intricate, you can just add, you know, or run it through a second time. You know, flip your plate, run it through again, because sometimes it's just a weird little spot. But yeah, I rarely have issues, but of course I do bring a lot. Okay. There we go. See this one? Pops right out. And then this one, is he still going to be finicky in that same exact spot? Which is just fine. It's not. But I'm, an I'm annoyed, but I don't really care. He just doesn't want to play nice. There we go. And then we get I don't know about that part. So they're just like the tiniest little spots that just want to stick. There we go. There we go. And then same with get out of there. Stop it. Snip it out. There we go. We're good. We're good. Got the leaves. Okay. Um. All right. Got our leaves. We've got our little birds. We've got our sentiments. The backgrounds that we did, we'll let them dry for a little bit longer. I am going to grab a cloth because I need to wipe off that stencil because we're going to use it on the inside of the card. So it's been soaking in soapy water, so I just got to wipe off 
the pace. There we go. There we go. Okay. There's our stencil back. Card bases, make sure. Card bases, stencil, post-it tape. Oh, I don't even need that one. I have post-it tape stuck to my, stuck to my die-cut machine that I like to reuse all the time, because that's what we do. In this house, we reuse post-it tape until there's nothing left of it. Okay. Okay, so we've got our card bases, our top holding, A2 white note cards, nothing crazy special there. And then post-it tape. Just at the score line to keep me from getting ink past that. And then I need the rest of my blending brushes, so I need a green purple and a brown green and purple and brown okay um i always finish the insides of my cards it is just been what i've done for many many years now Let's see what i got on my on my brushes um but yeah cards not done until the inside's done it adds more time and work on my end to do content and to finish the insides always. But I, just, I can't, it's, just, it's not done otherwise. It is not done otherwise. So we're just gonna use the stencil and the same inks again, of course. So my speckled egg, seedless preserves, crushed olive, walnut stain. So grab the right color and I'm going to go in with just a lighter hand. I'm not going to blend like full strength color to the inside of the cards because you got to be able to write over it always. Although with speckled egg, this is one of the colors you can do like full strength because it's just such a light, um, such a light blue that and actually, I, this is a little bit extra, but because I know what I'm, I sort of know what I'm doing, kind of. I'm a professional. Do you need two grip mats? No, but this is why I have two. I bought a second one. Okay. Okay. We're going to set this one up because otherwise the speckled egg is going to get picked up. I'll end up picking up other colors and making a mess. You're knocking things over. Because then I can just line the stencil up. See, it's so pretty. Okay. Just do it again. And then I can go back in. in roughly the same spot. They don't need to be the same. It doesn't really matter. But then I don't have to worry about coming back in to do the speckled egg and getting purple and brown and green picked up into it. Okay. I'm happy with that. So that's speckled egg. Let's go in with a bit of the walnut stain. Um, so then with the walnut stain, lighter hand. Trying not to add too, too much. In all the corners, that's fine. And then we've got the overlay crush or get back in there. So, a bit of crush which is a color I don't reach for very often. And then every time I do, I'm reminded of what a gorgeous green it is. Like, 
Crushed olive is just so underappreciated in my opinion. <laughs> it's lovely, lovely. And then seedless preserves, which is obviously one of my favorites. It's just a crazy gorgeous color. Just cause I can. Okay. And that'll be the inside. Okay. I always struggle on what to do on the inside of the cards. I. That's why I do what I do and show everybody in my videos to give ideas because it's always something different. And sometimes I keep it super, super simple and it's just, just a stamp sentiment. Or a sentiment strip, you know, or in this case, it's going to be just this stenciled pattern, you know, it's just a little something. It doesn't have to be completely over top. And I, I bet sometimes I do go completely over the top. In my old videos, I used to especially, I would do like full on scenes on the inside of my cards. It doesn't really matter. You can do whatever you want. Like, that's the beauty of it is, um, Doing what works for you and what, and if you don't like doing the insides of your cards, don't, you know? There's no hard and fast rule that anyone has to. It's totally up to personal preference. And yeah, mine is just to do it. I, I've i tried to not, but also in my case, because I've done it for so many years, if I stop doing the insides of my cards, I can't, I wouldn't even be able to deal with the like comments about like, what do you mean? There's nothing on the inside, ah, you know? So, but I'm okay with it. It's, it's just what I like to do. Okay, let's add a little bit more of that crushed olive. And then we'll go in with a bit of seedless preserves. It'll be fine, it'll be fine. Lighter hand, lighter hand. There we go. Gentle little taps, lighter hand. And get up more there. Add a little bit over here. Yep. Yep, I'm happy with that. I'm good with it. It's good. It's good. Put that over there. I'll deal with that later. Hawk hay. And then stick that post-it tape because it's still good to go. So we will stick it back on top of my die cut machine and I'll use it on another project and another one and another one until there's nothing left of it. Because again, in this house, we reuse post-it tape. Stick that there. Um, Okay, and brushes, and this, <laughs> yeah, now for the magic. Okay, let's move the insides out of the way. Let's move that, let's move that. Okay, and then, So for those that might have missed when we created this, not going over it, you can watch on replay. <laughs> the paste is pretty much dry. So now we have to melt the embossing glaze that's sitting kind of trapped in the paste. So for this, this is where you need the heat tool.
you guys might not be able to see it like as it's happening on camera. But see, it goes shiny, like it'll go shiny like a regular paste, but it'll maintain that crackle. Love it. Love it. If I can... Getting tasty. Oh, and I missed the spot. Just making sure I actually got it all. Looks like it did. So then you just get this like crazy crackly. I don't know. I just, there's something about like this that I just, I love it. I love it. I love it. It's so fun. So fun. Okay. The only thing I would do different the next time I do this is I'll just add more embossing glaze. <laughs> That's it. That's the only thing I would do differently because like I got very, which is still fine, like how it's like more speckly here. I just needed more embossing glaze sprinkled over it, but I'm still more than fine with it. This was fun. I have ideas. There will be more, more little projects in the future doing this. So yeah, love it. That is very shiny. Isn't it neat yes. and crackly? It is very crackly. Yep. Shiny and crackly. So, yeah. Okay. So, what I want to do is I'm going to trim this down a little bit. Not a lot. Just a bit. I'm going to trim it down. Um, probably. Yeah. And take off about an eighth of an inch off of all the sides. Just to get it a little bit smaller than the card base. Huh? This I have abused this thing. Just shh. I actually have a new brand new one. It's in a box around here somewhere. But 
just like my cutting plates. I'll keep using my little guillotine cutter till there's nothing left of it. Which is getting there because I've like dropped it on the floor multiple times. Um, whatever. Whatever, man. It is what it is. Okay. There we go. Did I miss? I don't think so. Yes. <laughs> Kath gets it. I know, isn't it? Like, speckly, fleckly, crackly goodness. I'm just making sure I actually... Yeah, I think I melted it all. We should be good. It should be good. It should be fine. I got... Whew. This technique does make a mess, by the way. Just, just for the record, I got like embossing glaze absolutely everywhere. I don't care. I'm fine with it. It's fun. Totally worth it. Okay. Um. So yeah, there's our backgrounds, which, yeah, very warped thanks to all the things, which to combat that, I think I'm going to, I've got like a little... Tiny fruit fly in here, it's annoying me. I forgot to link to this Big Mama foam tape. Big Mama foam tape, because that will help hold everything down. So, we'll stick Big Mama foam tape. Ooh, that was just too long. On the back of this, because that will hold it down perfectly. Uh, Oh, the unpaid intern is here. Just the new microphone doesn't pick him up as well as the old one does. New microphone works better. Is the it just doesn't. Or the five big Mama foam tape. Oh. Simon's Big Mama foam tape. Did you just. All you had to do in the type in was Big Mama. I typed in foam. No, you type in Big Mama. I don't know if it's Mama or Mama. Mama. M O M M A. That's Mama. Big Mama. No, no that's Mama. There you go. Some people use an A instead of an O. What rapper was it? I like it when you call me Big Papa. <laughs> Always funny when I'm talking about the Big Mama. Like, oh, Big Mama. Anyway. <laughs> Which rapper was it? I have no idea. You don't know? Oh. Anyway. <laughs> Big Mama phone tape. From Simon Says Stamp. I already, I showed that in my last live. I've actually shown it in many, many, many videos, but I've shown the reason why they call it Big Mama is it's the, the full, like this roll's been used like half up. Biggie, yes. Of course it was Biggie. Biggie. Put your hands in the air. Anyway. <laughs> I'm the one in the house that listens to the gangster rap, but. <laughs> I can't listen to anything except for 90s grunge rock. I do love me 90s grunge rock. That is, that is our, both our jam. It is. Like, but I do love some gangster rap and more from the 90s. Like 90s grunge is sprinkled with a little bit of rap I'm, I'm good with. The modern stuff, no thank you. Not a fan of. Anyway, anyway. Okay. Put away the big mama, the big mama foam tape. Uh, you guys are my people. Of course, you guys knew who it was. Anyway, <laughs> we're good. We're good. I got stuff everywhere. We're gonna. We're gonna get that going. I got smears on the card front, but I'm also okay with that because it's gonna get covered up. I'm not even sure how I got that there, but whatever. Okay. 
fold over our card bases and just reinforce that fold. Okay. Okay. No, oh, whatever. Whatever. We're good. Now we can start assembling the cord. Okay. And we'll see how well the idea in my head translated to the finished cards. So this gets a little iffy when they're so warped. Let me just and yes, technically you can put glue, like liquid glue, on the back of this. It gives you a little wiggle room. I, I, I avoid doing that more often than not because I want the like the serious stick of the foam tape. Here we go. Because that is what just fixed the warping. You know? So, but yes. Putting, if you're really struggling to get things lined up, because you know, it happens, you know, and you got foam tape, put a little line of liquid glue. Um, okay. Here at the most, I teach. I teach in an urban school on 55. My high school students ask if I like rap. And I say define rap because I was there when it started. Yeah. Yeah. Some of the modern stuff. I just, I love, I like pop music, you know, I'm all for it. But yeah, some of the modern rap, I'm like, really? Really? Mm, okay. Yeah. I'm not a big, I'm not a big rap fan. Okay. Ooh, flip that around. Let's do this again. Kind of eyeball it. And yep. There we go. All right. Okay. Mod grunge, kind of. This is my sort of grunge. You know, there's a little bit of brown in there. It's got a little bit of grunge. But yeah, this is this is my kind of grunge. And then we got our we got our sentiment. Yeah, I'm glad I ink blended it. You know, it's still subtle, but not totally. Yeah, and then we're gonna tuck those in. Kind of like that, I'm thinking. Is that how I want it to be? I think that's kind of how I want it to be. Get over where you belong. And then the bird's gonna sit on it. Just like so. He's so cute. Okay. Yeah, this works. So, because this is vellum, we have to be a little bit strategic with how we adhere these. So, what I'm gonna do is just hold this in place for a second. Oh, the other thing I forgot to, and it's under the, it'll be under the most used category, is my reverse tweezers. No, go back where you belong. Yep. Reverse tweezers. Under most used. Yeah. Hit enter. Just. No. <laughs> Scroll down to reverse tweezers. Tweezers. Right there. You found them. We're good. So you said scissors. I said tweezers. Tweezers. So we're just putting little little dablets of glue behind the sentiment. And then you just jury rig it with a couple of reverse tweezers. Let that sit. That's good. I would rather adhere the vellum directly behind the sentiment because we are adhering on top of like crackly texture everything it gets a little it gets a little intense so if I go like this again just like so and 
kind of tuck that in there. Just get in your place. Get in your home. Don't you know it's your home? We need to watch Happy Gilmore again. <laughs> it's been too long. Yeah, we do. Okay. I was going to suggest I really wanted to watch The Spaceman, the new one with Adam Sandler, and he's like in space. Until I saw the creature that's with him oh, the, in space. Yeah. The giant space spider. And I was like, great. Thanks. Thanks, Adam Sandler. Maybe we can use Ooh. AI to replace it with a Hello Kitty character. Why can't it be that? Honestly, I would love to be in space with Hello Kitty. I'd be fine with that. But a giant spider, I would uh, I would not do good. It would not be pretty. It would not be a fun time. Okay. Here we go. Flip that over. Okay. Yep. Reverse tweezers are a must-have in the craft room, in my opinion. For so many reasons. And having multiples, it's literally like having extra little pairs of hands. Like, love it. And for something like this, it just makes my life easier. Because, yeah, I'm being a little extra the way I'm adhering these, but this will just make it work. Kind of, literally just kind of like tucking the adhesive right behind there. There we go. That'll work. It'll hold, hopefully. So I'll just lift them and put them over there, let them dry. And then I did it with this one. And there we go. Cause like vellum doesn't need much cause it's, it's vellum. It's so lightweight. Like a, the teeniest dab of glue is gonna, you know, do her up. And then Yep, that'll work. We'll just do it like that. So we'll put glue on the back of this. And yeah, anything you're adhering on top of like a specific crackle paste, um, if you had used um, really almost any type of paste, but especially like crackle paste, glitter paste, etc., you want to use a really strong adhesive. And this is definitely where you do not want to use Xyron adhesive, adhesive sheets, anything like that, because they just, w they don't have enough like adhering strength over something with so much texture. So you want a good, a good, strong adhesive. This, this is what, this is what works. Right, let's flip this over. And then kind of come around about like that. Stick this one right there. There we go. Kind of do that. Both join. And then use my little magnet. This is a little hack I picked up from um Giannis Makula. These are just the magnets I get with my that I got with my gloss mat. They're they're linked in the description below. Um, but yeah, I just pile them on there. And since my mat is magnetic, you know, again, sometimes I'll stick like my misty on top of stuff, just something to weigh it down, you know, to hold it in place, let that glue dry. Cause again, we are adhering on top of massively textured, finicky background. There we go. And yeah, so we're gonna hear. And yes, those watching live in the description box under the video is a little Google form. You can put your name and address, and then the unpaid intern is gonna choose winners because I did get two cards, or I am getting two cards done. Yay, me. Um, he's gonna choose winners. And I'll mail these cards to the winners just, just because. And that's why I chose this sentiment today. I'll be a little sappy, but I do. I appreciate you guys tuning into my videos. Like interacting, thumbs upping, the commenting, all little super chats, all of it. I very much appreciate it. So I think the world of you guys.
should be fine. Let's get that one weird. Just like so. And then same thing. We're gonna get the magnets on top of them to hold everything in place. And I just slide that over so now I can come back with this guy. Ooh, I missed a spot of glue. This is where Pop that over there. Grab an extra magnet. Okay. Uh, what mat do you have? It's linked. It's it's from Glassboard Studio. It's it's listed and linked in the description box below. I didn't let the glue dry long enough. I got impatient. Good thing I have two sets of magnets. <laughs> we'll just do that. Boop. And. Boop. Okay. Oh yeah, I didn't forget the tittle. It's it's sitting right here. He that one's gonna be easy to to pop into place, but I'll do that once the glue's set up in a minute or two. Oh my goodness, how's everybody doing today? <laughs> mm. Oi. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. These were fun, and they're turning out pretty close to the, the random ideas I had in my head. Where's my, there's another bird. I was like, oh, where's the bird? Okay. I'm going to take that magnet out of there. Okay. So, yes, I did not forget the tittles. First time I've said that, and you didn't giggle. I, uh... I was in the clouds. <laughs> you were just like totally daydreaming. I could tell. Oh, funny. But yeah, I would hear them separately. But again, that one, because it's on top, there's like part of the vellum um, leaf right there. So that one I need to like hold in place till the glue dries. Because otherwise, it's going to be annoying. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, Shauna. I appreciate it. Oh, yeah. The... Oh, my sweater. It's from, um, Torrid. Yeah. I bought it from Torrid. Gosh, a couple years ago now, something like that. Okay. Where's my, there we go. So yeah, when it comes to little finicky die cuts like this, doing it separately and just adhering them in place is a million times easier then stacking them individually and then trying to adhere it, if that makes sense. Um, there. We'll just let that sit. Because, yeah, I just remember back in the day where I would sit and, like, literally take these little things, you know, and stack them together to adhere. It never even occurred to me until, again, someone, one of the other makers was, like, just doing it in place on the card. And I was like, you're a genius. <laughs> I don't know when. That stuff never occurs to me. Make life simpler? What is that? Okay. This guy, because the leaf is in a different spot, I can kind of avoid it. And we'll just flip over. There we go. And I'm going to do that one. That one. And that one, perfection. And then the little birds I'm going to adhere with just some foam squares. That's the plan. Eh. Careful with these magnets. They're super powerful. Okay. Yep. 
I'll leave that one for a minute. And we'll, we'll pop a little, we'll pop a little bird on it. Let's stick him on. Get some little small foam squares that we really need to get it get because they are grab the thin ones. That'll work. Yeah, that'll work. Just in there. And there. There we go. So then, get out of the there. Look at the little, the little birdie. Just looking all cute. I probably need to tuck a couple more home squares behind his head. Good job, eh? You want to go tell them to knock it off? Or somebody gets hurt. Yeah. Another use for reverse tweezers. So I've got my little foam squares. I'm just gonna tuck that in there. There we go. So he's got some stability behind his little head. And then we'll do same thing with this one. Okay. And now I've lost, like, where the heck I was. <laughs> uh, hello, Mari. Okay. Got home squares in place. Okay. Yeah. There we go. And... No, nope. eh. There we go. Okay. Get that. And put him there. Just his cute little cell. Ah. Again, careful with the magnets. Okay. Now, like I said, we gotta finish we gotta finish the birdie. So we're gonna just add little tiny crystals just making sure is that the smallest size in the pack I think that'll, yeah that'll work that'll work we're good we're good okay we'll just use a little black crystal put that in there put that in there. Oops. Okay. Then stick that in place. If you want to draw the winners, because I'm just doing the the last little last little bit. Sure. There's they got little eyeballs now. <laughs> Uh, okay and then find a little not, not like we really need it because you know I got a lot going on in these but I just thought to add some little little sequins because I mean could add a little bling you know why not why not so yeah these will just add a little extra something something totally unnecessary but you guys know me you guys know. So these are just some trendy stamps. Um, soapy bubbles. That's what they're called. Yeah. We'll just stick a few on here. Just because I can. If I can like get them to... There we go. We'll add a couple more, and these will be much more subtle once the glue fully dries, because this glue does dry clear. So I'm like off camera, as per usual. You got some winners. You got some winners. This one is uh, Shirley Sumpton. Something. Yeah. I recognize that name. She comments a lot. Shirley, I will be mailing you one of these cards. Mm -hmm. Shirley Sumpton. 
and Stephanie Laramie. And Stephanie Laramie. I will be mailing you guys these cards. Most likely we'll be mailing out this week. I haven't mailed out last week's live. Um, it was cold. <laughs> it was cold and I didn't want to leave my house. But uh, yeah, I'll do a mail out this week. And we'll mail you guys the cards. So, Shirley Sumpton. Yep. And Melissa Laramie. Uh, What's that, the other one? Stephanie Laramie. Stephanie Laramie. There we go. I don't know why I was thinking Melissa. So, yes, congratulations, ladies. And always, thank you guys for, for entering and all the things. I'm going to add these last little bits of bling to finish them off. Okay. Think. I think we're good. I've thrown pretty much everything at these guys. I didn't end up using the sentiment strips that I thought about using, but I'm fine with that. I did enough. I did enough. I think we're good. We're good. You know? So, I have a massive mess to clean up. As per, as per huge. Yeah my stuff out of the way so we got mixed media crackly embossing glaze backgrounds just fun and then of course the insides just to sort of mimic the colors these are fun a little like the texture on the vellum leaves too and our little barty you know and again exact same products same technique, same color, same everything, but they're not the same card, you know. They're just, they're just fun. These were fun. I'm definitely going to play more with this technique and the embossing glazes because they're just, man, I got ideas. I got so many ideas. So, okay, let me, I think I can do this. No, wait, I can just do this. There we go. Hello, hello, everybody. Woof. Woof. Okay. So, yes. Thank you all for, um, for watching. Where are the thumbs up? Yeah. It's, it's all good. It's all good. And yeah, thank you guys for tuning in and hanging out with me while I did this technique for the very first time on a live. And yeah, like I said, the only thing I'll do differently is I'll use more powder. I was I was too conservative with the embossing glaze. I just need to sprinkle on more. Like, yeah. Yeah, that's the only thing I'll do differently. And then I have other ideas with like I said the other pace and you know so many so many things. But yeah, everything is listed and linked in the description box below. I will be editing afterwards to add the few other things that I hadn't added ahead of time. And then I'll take the photos and do the social medias and all the stuff like I always do. And yeah, I'm glad you guys enjoyed it. I had fun doing it. This was, this was a good time and yeah, stay tuned. Cause we're, we're still gonna, you know, on Sundays we go live and I do have plans to do bonus lives to start swatching all my distress products. Cause I've been putting that off for years. But those will be later. I have some of the, like the new um, Scorched Timber. That's supposed to show up this week. Because my pre-order shipped out and it's, it's making its way. And I just checked the tracking actually just this morning, I think. And it said it's going to be delivered this week. So, yeah. Super fun. If I had had it, that's what I would have used today. But walnut stain's a beautiful color. So... Yeah, we're going to have some some fun with swatching. I just, I got a kick out of that during Tim's live revealing Scorch Timber. I had so many people requesting me to do lives of the swatching. And I'm like, if you guys want to watch, literally watch paint dry with me. You know, because that's, that's all it is. We'll do them. But for the distress product, it'll actually be multi. I'll have to split it up because, I, I, again, I don't, have the one, I don't have the time. There's 72 distress colors. You know, so there's 72 oxides, 72 distressing, 72 spray stains, 72 oxide sprays, 72 paints. I don't think I have all the distress paint, but I'm close. 
Same with the glazes. I actually have to go through my glaze stash and see what colors I'm missing because I know I'm missing some. Um, so yeah, but, and again, reminder that the, um, I missed that I got distracted. Where was that? In the makeup world, they do swatch and sip with beverages. <laughs> it would be fun, but yeah, yeah. I cause enough chaos sober. I <laughs> don't even, yeah, yeah, yeah. We still will do at some point. That is, it's on the list of things because, like, people have, many people are requesting Amy R after dark, you know, crafting and, and all the, you know, cocktails and all the things. Um, it will happen someday, but that is also just something that's like, just kind of like extra you know what I mean it would, it would be fun we would have a, I'm sure we would have a great time and it would just be a matter of like making sure that I advertise it properly so that people are aware you know because yeah it's on the list but as far as swatching um we'll see that'll be that'll be done during the day because that, that's work stuff for me and something I just want to do but yeah that new color is coming I can't wait. I'm super excited because that brown just looks chef's kiss. And yeah, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see where everything um, goes. Maybe you and Chris can do the distress watching together. No. Um, he's got to work. Like I will probably be doing it like during, during, during normal human work hours, which he works full time. That's why we do these lives on Sundays because that's when he's able to actually help. And... Yeah, we'll we'll just see. Um, doesn't have to be booze. They do coffee match. Oh yeah, totally. Like it'll be a, just a we will hang out and chat and like I always do anyway with swatching stuff because I used to, I used to only do them mostly on my Facebook page live and then um, I upload them to my YouTube channel after the fact. But yeah, for the distress stuff, most likely will be like here on my YouTube channel that's that's the plan anyway because there was just there was a lot of requests for it which yeah we'll sit and hang out and chat and I will get the work done because I I need to I need to get my product swatch I do much better and I have a swatching playlist already on my YouTube channel for those that aren't aware I have many playlists many many playlists for all the videos but I specifically have a swatching playlist because I've done several videos over the years with different products and things and swatching and people like them so I'll keep doing them and I like it I like it um thank you Mari yeah I'm, I'm excited to get my hands on it I I've got ideas it's it's an it's a very neat it's a very neat color I'm I'm looking forward to it I keep calling it scorched earth <laughs> yeah. that's something I normally would do because I I reference that it's like don't cross me because I will scorch the earth and salt it afterwards but anyway anyway <laughs> uh did I miss the question uh yes I do I but check my um swatch playlist I do have the one tag wafer die that I do use is linked in the swatch video I did. I did a couple videos for the Distress Mica Stains. I used a specific, it's from Waffle Flower and it actually cuts nine at a time, which is, oh. so that one will be, is one of them. So that's in my Mica Stain swatch videos. That's linked. So that one I use a lot. And let me, let me where's my, um, let me think. Just give me a second to, to formulate my, because my, I was thinking scorched earth and like my enemies. <laughs> my brain goes. Writing a note to myself. Um, post uh, supply list. List ahead of time. Time for my distress. I'm literally writing this as I say it. Distress swatch lives um because there are certain products yes that i like to use da, da, da. i made a note it just it's gonna take me some time 
I gotta like formulate and figure out what I'm gonna do. Blah blah blah. It's because it's gonna be at least a couple weeks before I start. At least I got so much stuff on my plate, you guys. Oi. But um, yeah, yeah. I'll post a supply list. And then we'll get to it. And then I'll post when I, I'm doing it. I'm For me, I'm honestly thinking like Monday mornings or something, which that might be a little nuts, though, because I go live on Sundays and Monday mornings are usually a little rank for me. But we'll see. We'll see. We'll see where where things go with all of it. And um, yeah, it's. Yeah, yeah. I'm getting distracted. So, yeah, check out my Swatch playlists. I will try to announce things ahead of time within reason. Usually anything other than my Sunday lives, I am all over the place. I'm not scheduled. Because my, my life literally is chaos. People, I get some really angry, weird stuff from people regarding my references to my life being chaotic. And I just... I'm not sitting here, like, complaining about it. It, it. You know, it'd be different if I was really, like, whining and, like, why does this keep happening to me? Like, oh, my God. No, it's just my life is chaos. <laughs> Literally, my life is just chaos. Things happen. Stuff's crazy. It just is what it is, you know? And I just roll with it. So it's just hard to do anything scheduled, you know? The Sunday lives, we've been sticking to it. It has not been easy. But... I enjoy it. Chris enjoys helping. I've asked him many times because it's like, you, you know, you don't have to. But he volunteered, again, b literally because chaos erupted in the first couple lives. And I was getting hit by trolls and all kinds of stuff. So anyway, it's just so much. Um, it's just so much. Yeah. And yeah, most people's lives, like everybody's got something, you know, everyone has something. There's there's and multiple things. You know, that's why I always try to, um, I always try not to judge. I get judged a lot. I try not to judge others, you know, because you never know what someone else is going through. You never know. And those that sh share and post online and stuff, you have no idea what's going on behind the scenes, you know? So, yeah, it just is what it is. Um, yeah. The multi-tag. I'm glad that it helped with the swatching. I am just, I am a very visual person. I enjoy swatches. I just haven't made the time until more recently, like to really put in the effort. And it helps so much, like doing those mica stain sprays that are all behind me on the wall. Um, I really, you know, my little swatch ring, I reference that often because it doesn't look the same as it does in the bottle, obviously. And all my little stamp, like my, my Simon positive saturating, so my Concord nine things, like same thing. Like I swatch them all out and those I don't reference as much, but I still reference them, you know? And I know with my distress products, because there's 72 colors and they're, they look, oxide looks different than d the distress ink. Oxide spray looks different than spray stain, d -d 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 -d, you know, it helps having swatches. It really does. And if people don't want to do them, don't do them, you know? So yeah it's 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 all good anywho thank you guys i'm gonna go and yeah chris and i are gonna get started on supper soon and i gotta clean up my mess take the photos that's another thing i need to work on is photos i am horrible i suck at taking photos of my car uh really i'm 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 not okay with it like i'm fine with it but at the same time i'm also not okay with it it's something i need to work on thank you tammy thank you i appreciate it um, but yeah, that's also on my never ending to-do list that is longer than both of my arms. My to-do list is longer than both. <laughs> is getting better at taking photos, says the person who's been doing this as a job for like a decade plus. You'd think I'd have it figured out by now. I don't. But same thing though, literally. I don't change nothing. And then all of a sudden my photos just get worse and I'm like, how? Why? Hmm. Anyway. It just is what it is, you know? So, yeah, it's, it's many things, so many things. But I will take photos of these cards. The adhesive is, this is what I was talking about. Yeah, see, I can, I can probably, it's a little blown out because the, the, these lights, but see, and there we go. Get it? 
see the adhesive is almost dry and see how they look much more subtle now. Like they're not as obvious because once the adhesive dries clear, they're just like kind of shimmery little bits on the background without that, that white background of the glue because the glue dries clear. If that, I hope that makes sense, you know? So. Okay, just reading the... Well, thank you, Anne-Marie. It's, we're always our own worst critics. That is true. You know, I say this to people, but I always say to you, do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> so I tell everyone, like, how they should, like, view everything and live their lives. But do I do any of it? No. <laughs> but yeah, it's, uh, yeah. We are our own worst critics. That's why I always tell people, too, like, when you're making something, if you absolutely hate it, just walk away with it. Walk away from it come back to it later because you come back to it with fresh eyes it's great but we are literally our own worst critics and when it comes to specifically like card photography i have always hated the photos on my cards literally always it is rare every once in a blue moon i'll just get like the perfect shot and it's like oh, i made that card look amazing this photo is perfect and it's just dumb luck i didn't do nothing you know anyway <laughs> just is what it is you make lists on a little piece of paper and then you lose them yeah i do but i keep my i got my big old post-it note um and i'm i'm getting better that actually was something else i was working on behind the scenes is i was like transferring i talked about that oh i did a live on facebook earlier this week that's why because i didn't put it on youtube it was just more like as i was doing some organizing and i sat down and i turned on the camera and i just chatted with everyone it was a good time and that was one of the things, though, that I am working towards is I took because I had a stack, you know, of post-it notes, card ideas, to-do lists, so many like grocery lists, like so many random things. And I took them all and I put them where they belong. So some of the post notes themselves, I stuck in my planner, rewrote out things, the card ideas I put into my Trinity. I, I linked this. I linked this. I meant to show this when I started and I forgot because um, I had the card idea sketched out but yeah because i because i always get asked so this is the trinity sketch plan create this thing is a beast big hefty it's hefty it's, it's big so when you see the price that's why it also comes in its own box it's very nice i do love it i love it so anyway i've been getting better at like all my card ideas i've been like sketching them out so i sketch them out it's not pretty i, I don't care it's just a sketch and then write down my ideas and the products I want to use, et cetera, et cetera. And I've got like pages and most of them I've already made, but I've got a few other ones because I went through my post-it notes and I was like, oh, I forgot I had that idea. So I was like writing them into here and I was like, yes, yes. <laughs> so that's good. That's good. I got, I got ideas for years, literally. So I keep this off to the side. Um, always now and i'm trying to make better use of it and then yeah I'm trying to keep things a little more organized so yeah it's uh you're doing something so many of us are too afraid to do give yourself credit oh i'm fine with it i'm fine with it i have been doing this for many many years and i yeah i used to do the same thing i used to be a demo that was actually some of the hardest like standing up in front of people in person and they're all watching you. I will never forget. I I don't remember where it was or who I did it for, but the very first party that I demoed at and I nearly threw up in public. It was terrifying, but I loved stamping so much. And I was just like, so into it that I forced myself. Yeah. It's different though. Talking to a camera. It's still nerve wracking. Like I sweat. Like before I turn the camera on and go live, I am just absolute at the max with anxiety it's so fun it's so fun but I love what I do so that's why I keep doing it and I do enjoy it it's just getting over that first hour <laughs> and Chris knows um yes it is I linked to it at the bottom of the the supplies um let me just quickly double check I think I did uh yeah I did ha I remembered look at me look at me go so but yeah it's 
it's one of those things. I'm I'm good. And even going live, honestly, it's it's not necessarily the act of going live because I've done I've been doing this for years too. I used to go live way back in the day. Way back when we used to, someone was asking me about that. They're like, what's Periscope? And I'm like, oh, that's what we used to do. Way back. Before live streaming was a real thing. You know, we had to download a separate app. You know, as old folks, we had to download a separate app to do it. <laughs> and I used to go live on there and that was eight, eight years ago now. Yeah, before live streaming was really like took off and now there's multiple platforms youtube does it facebook instagram yada 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 whatever so yeah i used to go live on there all the time and then um yeah i used to do instagram lives a lot too and then uh i've done my facebook ones and the youtube ones and they're all fine i don't mind it i'm much less stressed about it when i'm just doing it for funsies and we're just chatting you know, I'm fine with it. Like some of the Facebook lives I've done, like I am an absolute mess, literally like my hair's a mess. I don't wear makeup anymore. I, I just don't care. But there's something different about doing it on Facebook or on YouTube. And there's an audience and I'm making something start to finish and need to explain what I'm doing. And this is also my job. So I'm trying to be professional, trying to not let f bombs slip. You know what I mean? Like there's just levels. <laughs> uh so yeah oh yeah anxiety is is not um is not fun and a lot of people don't think that because i i you know i'm here i'm i'm sitting in front of a room but it's like i have severe severe social anxiety like severe it is really 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 bad and it's really hard and i just for i just i shove it down it's it's not good <laughs> but I deal with it, man. It is what it is. So, and just because a person has anxiety doesn't mean they don't, you know, like doing what I do. It's like, I love, I love talking to everybody. I love having conversations with people but because of my anxiety. I am so drained afterwards, like literally, like just drained, so drained. Like it takes me a while to recover afterwards, you know? So there's, there's that difference. Um, and yes, the hamsters. That's where we originated. Yeah, I got quite an awesome little group from Periscope. We had lots of fun. They were great. It just escalated into serious, severe, severe insanity. Like, I was getting threats and just things that I won't repeat because no one needs to hear the things that were said to me and things that I would never say to another human being. They're horrible things that were happening on Periscope that just... I was like, I can't do this anymore. I cannot. Yeah, I can't. So quit doing it. But now I do these ones and we're good. We're good. Um, oh, those ones. Those shelves are from um, Ikea. They're just the picture ledge shelves. They have a, obviously a, a Moss Landa. Moss Landa. Because I had somebody asking like over and over again. And I was like, I keep replying to you and telling you what they are. Um, they're just the Moss Landa picture shelves from Ikea. Because they're only like that deep. Something like that. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, just laughed out loud on the f bombs. It's my favorite word. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> I swear like a trooper. In my regular life, like all the time, that's just what I do. I just don't do it in my lives and I don't do it in my edited videos. One, got to be advertiser friendly. Obviously, I do this as a job. And two, I am aware a lot of people's kids or just it's easy for children to access my content is what I'm saying. Um, so I keep I keep that language like to the absolute bare minimum or completely don't use it at all. It sometimes something slips, you know, but is what it is. Okay. Um, the multi tag dies out of stock. Yeah, no, they're, if they're out, they'll, they'll hopefully be able to get it restocked. Dice sometimes take a little longer for them to restock because of the minimums and everything, but they'll hopefully be able to get it. That one has always been like super, super popular. Anyway, I enjoyed chatting with you guys. I could sit all day and chat with you guys. I do enjoy it. Um, but I got, I got work to do and I need to get other things done. 
and yeah, we got supper to cook and all the, all the fun things. Um, I remember you crying about it. Oh yeah. It's, it's not fun when you're getting literal death and R-A-P-E threats. That's what it like horrendous things. You know, I have a very thick skin. There's, there isn't much that anyone can say to me ever that I'm just like, really? I, it just, honestly, it just makes me feel sorry for the person saying it because I get thrown some crazy stuff. Like I make cards online, man, seriously, but I get under people's skin and people feel the need to say atrocious things to me. Um, but the periscope stuff was, uh, was vile, like horrific, horrific, vile garbage. Anyway, um, that was then. And yeah, it is why I will always shine a light on and call out that kind of crap. Um, even the more minor stuff that people like to tell me, like, just ignore it. Like, what are you doing? I'm like, no, I'm going to call it out. And I will post a screenshot with your username if you feel the need to say that kind of stuff. Because it's like, I have no problem. I don't care. If you want to enter other people's spaces and spew negative, stupid garbage at them, I'm going to call you out on it. You know, and if it's nasty, nasty stuff, which hardly ever happens anymore, thankfully, that stuff I just delete and block. Because again, nobody needs to see it, hear it, have it come near them. You know, that kind of stuff gone by just out. But the petty stuff that some people like that just, yeah, like, am I, are you talking about the chaos in your life is nauseating or whatever other stupid comments people come up with? I'm like, screenshot, share it. I don't care. <laughs> so anyway, I hope you all have a wonderful day. And seriously, so often that my students start saying uh, all those 90s phrases, like they're kind of coming back. I'm like, as if, you know, <laughs> love it. Love it. But anyway, thank you guys. And yes, the unpaid intern, he is dealing with the chaos as we speak. And yeah, I'm glad you guys enjoyed it. I enjoyed chatting with you for this last little bit. And I'll do all my things like I promised. And just stay tuned. I've always got randomness up my sleeve. You never know where things are going to go. And yeah, have a wonderful day. And I will see you guys very soon in the next video.